Well, I can start with uh, talking about uh, that one. Uh, talking about the title. It's uh, it, as soon as it comes up, you can see that it is uh, in quite a, uh, a full mouth uh, mouthful, and it has at least two uh, terms in there which are. Um, uh, a little bit of a hype, and uh, which are doing very well if you're applying for grants, and that is molecular imaging, and that is personalized healthcare. And it's very difficult to define what they actually actually are, but uh, I will do a little try. This is uh, uh, from a paper by Terry Jones in 1996 uh, about the spectrum of medical imaging, and we've seen this already from Opla Schober, from structure to molecular, molecular targets. And so my talk will be concentrated, that's only also the one where I know most of, about PET. Uh, of course, molecular imaging uh, in, in preclinically uh, is nowadays also possible using molecular imaging. But this is primarily, uh, uh, I will be talking about applications in men. And if you talk about molecular imaging, of course, um, uh, we have diagnosis, we have staging, we have response monitoring and response prediction, and this is an increasing level of individualized treatment or personalized healthcare. It's nonsense to say that, uh, that this, of course, would be personalized healthcare on its own because having the right diagnosis is what's where it starts. Otherwise, you would, if you have a tumor, you would do a whole body radiation with every patient. Um, if you talk about PET, uh, that is a mole molecular imaging technique. It has picomolar sensitivity, as Otmar already mentioned, and it is a technique to, uh, to visualize molecular pathways and interactions. And an important aspect is that you can quantify uptake, and so you can, uh, with the proper models, you can quantify biological processes. Within the oncology field, and certainly within clinical oncology, it is uh, mainly known because of FDG which is a marker of glucose metabolism, and because of the increased glycolytic rate in tumors, you have increased uptake. And here you have an example of a patient with a lung tumor and with bone metastases. They're easy pictures. Uh, even I, as a non-MD, uh, I'm able to put a diagnosis to this. And the fact that you can see metastases very quickly, it means that it has become a proven technique for staging. And uh, at least in our hospital, uh, patients will, uh, with an isolated lung tumor will not be operated until they have had a, a whole body PET scan first, uh, which will reduce the number of futile operations by a factor of two. Um, I, say, I told you I'm not an MD, uh, so I have tried to uh, keep all my examples in this area. It's, we should talk about the lungs, but this is a breast tumor just as an example. If you look at the, uh, the top, you see a breast tumor uh, and going down with treatment. Uh, so you have a, a, clearly you have a responder here. And here you have a tumor which doesn't change at all after one and after two causes. And so you have a non-responder. This is very simple. And you can even, from the image, you can say uh, whether there's a responder or non-responder. The problem is that it is a qualitative assessment. And it is, uh, that is based on the contrast uh, between normal tissue and tumor. And that might change in more experimental therapies. And uh, if you want to define, uh, don't want to make it too uh, sensitive to the observer, uh, you need uh, cutoff points to make sure uh, that you have the optimal uh, distinction between responders and non-responders. Um, and also, if you have a more quantitative approach, you also take into account that the delivery to the tissue you inject uh, will be uh, uh, different. And this is illustrated here. Uh, basically, uh, within the PET field, we always inject the radioactivity. So it is uh, getting to the tumor through the bloodstream. So that is your delivery uh, part. Then um, in clinical medicine, it means then we wait for one hour. Uh, patient stays in a quiet room, goes to the PET scanner, and is being scanned. And we make a whole body scan, and you get this, for example, this picture. But this uptake, of course, is just uh, FDG uptake. It is not glucose metabolism. Uh, because within this period, the uptake is increasing uh, when the, the activity is delivered to the tumor. Uh, it's increasing. And if this would be pre and that would be post-therapy, then you can see that this, at this time point, uh, 
the numbers would be exactly the same. At this time point, you would have a responder, and here you would have a non-responder, except that if you only have one scan, you don't know what is happening in the meantime. And therefore, we are standardizing protocols uh, across Europe, which is working quite well. But still, you need to take into account that SUB, uh, so the uptake, standardized uptake value, is not the same as glucose metabolism. And uh, that if you really are interested in glucose metabolism, you need a dynamic scan. Now, the good thing is that if you uh, correlate uh, SUB, so that's the uptake in, in a static image, to glucose metabolism obtained with a dynamic technique, then you have a very good uh, uh, constant relationship uh, between the two. Uh, and here you have a database of 170 patients uh, with lung cancer, breast cancer, and esophagus cancer. And you can see that the relationships are all the same. And these include scans before and after one course of three treatment. This is standard chemotherapy. So this is a validation that is this image uh, single image and measuring the single image uptake is valid uh, for this particular uh, type of response monitoring. However, if you go to new uh, anti cancer drugs and especially the more biological ones, uh, then you could have something completely different. Uh, and here you see the, what, what you saw in the previous slide, and this is one example of one drug, it's only nine patients on an experimental drug. And he, this is the relationship of the therapy between uptake and glucose metabolism. Now, if you look at here, here, if this is your glucose metabolism at the start, then you would have a SUV of about 0.8. <coughs> and uh, then uh, after therapy, if the, if the glucose metabolism hadn't changed, you would have an SUV of 0 0.4. So your uptake is a factor of two lower. You would say, ah, I've got a, respond a responder. But if you go to the true data, uh, that is not correct. It, is, uh, there is a, it would be a non-responder. It would be an artifact. We have seen more often now that it's the opposite, uh, opposite way, that uh, actually uh, if you, that, that the, this relationship is steeper than that one. So you think you have no response, and you have a response. So our advice is that if you have a new drug or a tumor where you haven't tested it yet, uh, if you have a new drug, you first would do a, a, a uh, correlation between static images and dynamic images, uh, which gives you glucose metabolism. And if you have the relationship between the two, you can use that as a calibration factor in the future of a multi-center trials uh, to use your SUV. And uh, th this little part, I want to uh, uh, finish with a classical example, I think, uh, which is quite impressive. I think it's from the Leuven Group, where uh, you have uh, a lot of uh, tumors here in the, in, the, in, the, in the liver. You can see the FDG uptake. It's very, and then you give uh, a drug. I must say, I have no, I have no uh, uh, attachments to anybody. I'm still a free agent, so I can show what I, whatever I like. Um, and then if you look at four weeks of at the CT, you can see that uh, the, the, tumors haven't, uh, the tumors haven't changed or the anatomical picture. But even after eight days, uh, there's a massive uh, decrease in uptake uh, with FDG. And if you relate this to survival, you can see there's a, uh, th there's a big difference between responding patients and non-responding patients on the FDG scan. So we are able, and then this is after eight, day, eight days, we are able to uh, monitor response early during therapy. So you only expose the patients for a little while to therapy, but it is still, it is still monitoring during therapy. So you still have to start patients on a certain therapy. And really, uh, if you see what kind of types of drugs we have, then if you would for every drug, oh, the patient doesn't react, next drug, again, 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 uh, you would have a lot of uh, different uh, trials. And what you really want is a prediction of response, not monitoring response, but prediction before you even start the treatment. And I've given, I'm showing those Texel as an example. We know that uh, it is beneficial in, in, in a number of patients, but the failure rate is more than 50%. And so uh, one way of looking at uh, prediction would be to label, to make a dose Texel radioactive, and label, so label it and do a PET scan to see whether it actually gets into the tumor. That's the first question you uh, would ask. And here you see uh, injection of uh, labeled docetaxel. 
note that it is labeled with carbon 11 so that the molecular structure, structure of dostoxel hasn't changed. So it behaves exactly the same as the, as the drug. And you see that initially you have uptake in the, in the bloodstream showing the delivery, and then you, uh, over time, how it evolves. And you can see that uh, in this particular case, uh, there's a lot of uptake in the liver. And, uh, but you also are able to see some tumors. This is uh, work which has just started. Uh, one of my PhD students, Astrid van der Veld, uh, her data. You can see the tumor here, and you can see uptake in the tumor. We're now do, uh, checking whether the kinetics of labeled dostoxel is the same at baseline and during the first course of therapy uh, to see whether it is indeed predictive of the behavior during therapy. And we're also looking at uh, 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 changes of uptake due to, um, for example, bevacizumab, uh, where, you where you change the, uh, uh, the delivery and whether we can modify uptake in the tumor. Another one, I don't have to say too much about this because this has been ex explained quite uh, in detail yesterday evening and this morning. Uh, and this is about uh, EGFR mutation and TK1 uh, inhibitors. Um, and of course, uh, TK, TK, TKI uh, uh, is important for, uh, for these uh, patients. Uh, and again, we have uh, re very recently uh, uh, synthesized uh, carbon 11 labeled erlotinib, so it's now radioactive. And if you then, uh, and this is EF, actually the very first two patients which we've scanned, here you can see a patient with a mutated uh, non cell lung cancer, and here with a non mutated, and here you have high uptake in the tumor, and you, here you have no uptake in the tumor. Of course, the next step would be to uh, to check this with uh, uh, eventual outcome. But in this case, uh, one would say, well, we have high uptake here, so uh, this looks, uh, this could be a responder, and this could be a non-responder. And so you're now able to uh, predict beforehand. And my final example uh, is given here. Uh, here you have, and, and this is another f uh, field of research, is uh, uh, label monoclonal antibodies. Uh, before you give them a therapy. Uh, here you have a patient uh, with a tumor here and w uh, with, a, with FDG. You see a hotspot uh, in the tumor, so it is high glycolit glycolytic rate, as we would expect. But here, uh, if the question is, should we put this patient on a rituximab? And so we've labeled the reduction map with a long lived uh, tracer, uh, Zirconium 89. This actually is now made in our hospital and we ship it all over the world. Everybody can uh, get this and the chemistry uh, associated with it. And you see also of this drug, when it's labeled, there's high uptake in the tumor. So in that case, you would say, yes, uh, this is the right treatment for this patient. And if you then take a, uh, an FDG scan three months later, you see that also on the metabolic image uh, there is a disappearance of signal. So this appears to be a, a responder, which was predicted on the basis of this scan. So uh, in summary, I would say that molecular imaging is uh, an essential step uh, towards personalized therapy. Thank you very much.